The S&P 500 index continues to push up higher. And what does that mean for us as investors? So to all the first time viewers and investors, welcome to the channel invest for tomorrow to all the subscribers. Welcome back. And for my effort in time and letting me know that you appreciate the time and effort I put into making these videos, please do so. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new and smash that like button to let me know you watch this video. It helps out the YouTube channel. And like I said, it lets me know that you appreciate the time and effort I put into making these videos. So the S&P 500 index, it just continues to go higher. Now, this is a video that I'm not too excited to do right now, but I will be excited when the time comes if there is a pullback. I hope I'm completely wrong. And I want every single investor and viewer that does not agree with me in the comments down below. Just write the word wrong. And I would really appreciate that. Because that lets me know how many investors out there do not see what I'm seeing. And if I am the only one seeing this, I'll be glad that I'm the only one seeing it. Because I'm going based off of analysis ratings, based off of articles, and based off of what the technicals are showing. So I would really appreciate for you guys to comment down below the word wrong. I would really appreciate that. That means a lot. And maybe if enough of us say that it's wrong, it turns out to be wrong, right? And it won't be right. So the S&P 500 index, I've been watching it very closely. And the last time I did a video on it was July 25th. And it actually was sitting at around 4,397. And today it's at 4,419. It just continues to overextend. Now, this week has been a tremendous week of earnings. And a lot of volume has been going into the S&P 500 index. Now, the earnings that have came out, are some of the stocks or largest stocks that hold a lot of weight in the S&P 500 index to the point that they hold about a 20% to 29% total value all collectively of the total weight of the S&P 500 index. Like literally think about that about 10 to 12 different companies actually hold the weight of 20 to 29% of 500 other companies. That's something to think about for a second and these earnings have been spectacular some of them have jumped up some of them have pulled down now we saw that the, on july 25th the rsi and the macd were in different positions right and they were about to cross here and this was pushing upwards and i stated it might have a little bit of more room to go higher now you can see here how it jumped up pulled down and jumped up again now that's the one day when we put the 30 minute though things start to look like they're pulling back okay and we had this little pullback. I had stated we might see some type of pullback or consolidation in this period. And it might become a little confusing to understand where the S&P 500 index and the overall market wants to go. Especially after this big pullback here and big jump. That was very fast and a little too quick to the point where all of this right here canceled out. And it might cool off again, right? The question is, how is it going to cool off? Is it going to be a straight shot to the downside, consolidation, and then kind of like a slow downward trend and then start to bounce back up? You know, those are the big question marks. But based off of analysis ratings and these articles that I'm about to share with you guys and the technicals, you're going to see what are the points that I'm watching for moving forward, right? This is my opinion, my approach, and what I see. That's all it is. It's not financial advice. I'm not here to scare you guys. I'm just here to be aware and prepared and watch these carefully because this earnings week has had a lot of weight on pushing it back up. I made the video once again, July 25th and after the 25th, the 26th, 27th and all the way down here to the middle of the day of the 27th, it had fallen down a little bit and then it started to bounce back up because of those earnings pushing it higher. And now, we're just pulling right back down. So if all those earnings and all these stocks like Tesla, Apple start cooling off, the question, like I said again, are we going to consolidate here? Or are we going to start pulling back down? So let's see what articles and experts are saying. So the first thing is right here. And Bank of America, they had a price target between 4,200 to 4,400 for the S&P 500 index. And this is what they're saying now. Investors should sell stocks and raise cash as bearish indicators pile up for the S&P 500 
Bank of America says. Now, they're not saying you want to do that right now. They're just anticipating it. So they're basically telling investors and small retail investors tend to actually not listen to this. And we overlook this sometimes. And then the big whales are the ones that are paying attention to this. And it's not like they listen completely to it, but they move the markets, right? So the big whales are going to look at this article and say, either we start shorting the stock, uh, the S&P 500 index individually as well, or collectively, or we start selling, holding on some cash to buy the dip. And then also they talk about the August and October seasonality next week, which is every single year for the last 50 years. If you go back and do some research between August to October, things get a little quiet. They kind of slow down for not just the S&P 500 index, but the overall market. There's always opportunities every day, which is what I look for. Um, if that's something that interests you and you want to know what stocks I watch daily, you can join us over at the Discord and my weekly watch list over at the Patreon. But that is something that I do daily. And no matter what type of seasonality we're in, there's always opportunities in the market. But for long term holds or opportunities that are presenting themselves to actually be at a discount, quote unquote, it tends to happen between August and October. If you go back in the history of those months, you'll see now. They're basically saying that, yeah, it's time to shave off a little bit. And this is probably one of the biggest things that indicate a big red flag. So the Federal Reserve has not changed their monetary policy. And they stated, you know, that things are going to keep on flowing the same up till now, but that they haven't thought about tapering, but it's coming. They're just not sure when right now. Margin depth is something that's been used to actually indicate how bad things can get like coming in the future if it keeps on going higher there's a point that it's going to peak and when it pulls down it starts bringing the s p 500 down look it says here although peaks in margin depth don't always coincide with highs with the s p 500 index they tend to be bearish for us equities overall basically is what bank of america said you could see here in 2007 there's a little bit of peak here started to drop and then look what happened right here 2011 2015 you know it wasn't that bad and then here you go with may of 2018 and then also here we are with 2020 look at that that peak right there look at that drop look at that drop so they kind of go together so when this starts pulling back the s p 500 index is going to start pulling back and that's something that a lot of analysis experts are anticipating because this is at an all-time high guys and everything that goes to an all-time high tends to pull back and the s p 500 index and the overall markets are hitting all-time highs consistently so that is something to be aware of and pay close attention to i'll never forget a lot of people were saying back in 2019 in the fall of 2019 you know we are at all-time highs like this is the best market ever this and that and then it took a few months and then obviously it became a much more bigger catalyst of a fall not just because we were in all time highs, but because of the lockdowns and then the whole economy issue. And then it pulled down and margin, right? Depth started to pull down as well. So when this starts to pull down, this will pull down. Most likely they coincide slightly. And that's what Bank of America is talking about. And they're basically anticipating some type of pullback. And another thing too, if there's a pullback in August and September, it might even price in the possible announcement of tapering that can come in September or possibly even in November, right? Because that's what a lot of um, experts uh, were saying in articles that were coming out yesterday. And that's a lot of speculation right now. I'd rather just wait until the Fed announces, but that's what's going around um, in these articles as well. So right here in this whole entire article when i was reading it they talk again about bank of america that the s p 500's flirtation with all-time highs may be a sign to sell according to bank of america so they keep on popping up everywhere now that is something that i've noticed that maybe they're just the big bear and i know a lot of you guys are going to probably comment down there don't listen to them don't listen to the big whales they're just trying to manipulate the markets the big banks and i completely respect what everyone has to say and uh, a lot has been, you know, different in, in the perspective of Wall Street and Main Street and the retail investor and the hedge funds and the banks. And I completely 
um, understand the whole entire perspective. But at the end of the day, the market makers have way more than the retail investors could ever have because usually market makers like banks like Bank of America and hedge funds actually have collectively a lot of people's money, just the money that's sitting in your bank account and just like everyone else's and they're trading with that. So they don't even need you know, people to open up brokerage accounts to use that money for investments. So just think about that when it comes to, you know, the power that these banks and so many hedge funds have, right? And then hedge funds, you directly go through them if you want to, like Vanguard, uh, BlackRock, and people buy their uh, ETFs and their mutual funds. And same thing with ARK Invest and so many others, right? So here we are with that statement from Bank of America two times. This is something that I found very interesting and it's coming up tomorrow. So the Federal Reserve, a lot of people realize that the S&P 500 index didn't do much, right? It kind of just bounced up and now it's pulling back a little bit. It's almost like the S&P 500 index is not anticipating good news tomorrow when it comes to this. And I think this is the most important part of this video right now that can actually let us know how August might look, how September might look. And you could see here in this video why I stated August 2021, September 2021 are critical and what to expect. I could be completely wrong and the S&P 500 keeps on soaring higher and doesn't even cool off, but this is something that can make everything a game changer. And it's stated right here, okay? With rising inflation, which the Federal Reserve already stated it's actually beyond what they expected, okay? But they still think it's going to be transitory. Now, the definition of transitory can mean many different things. It was kind of summarized in the Fed meeting yesterday, but not really uh, to a narrow point. It was very broad. So with rising inflation and concerns that higher prices would not be transitory as expected, the focus on Friday will be on the June reading of personal consumption expenditure price index. And these readings are gonna be huge. And institutional investors versus retail investors that are watching this are going to pay close attention to it to understand how transitory, quote unquote, is inflation really and how much people are really spending. If people are not spending a lot, yet inflation is rising, that's going to be a concern for institutional investors and retail investors within the markets. And I'm not sure how exactly would people react to that because inflation goes down when people aren't spending, inflation goes higher when people are spending. If people are not spending, but inflation's going higher, the Fed might have to either taper sooner than expected or rate hikes will come even faster than even tapering in a full announcement like they're planning to do because they even stated that inflation right now is beyond what they expected, but they still plan it to be transitory and on track, quote unquote, that's what they stated. But this is gonna be something big tomorrow, so definitely be aware of this. Pay close attention to the S&P 500 index moving forward because it's still not overbought. It could possibly push a little higher. Bank of America sounds very bearish. It's going to be interesting to see what other banks and hedge funds start to say but we are in a point where things seem to be a little bit overextended and overheated and August and September, either or, are gonna be some important months for a possible correction. And if it continues going lower beyond correction percentages, it could become a crash and that's going to be something to be aware of. Now, what are the levels I'm looking at? If this starts to correct, well, the first thing I would look at is right down here at 4,200 then down here at 4,100, and then the worst case scenario for now is $4,000. Anything below that would be a huge crash and a big shock to the markets. I mean, there has to be many different bearish catalysts all at once bringing it down, but I could see about anywhere from 200 to 400 point difference of a pullback, creating a small correction and pullback in the markets due to this in news and information and if tapering comes sooner than expected. So it's definitely gonna be something to watch, pay close attention to, something to be aware of. And I look forward 
to seeing everyone's comments down below telling me that I'm wrong, that this video is completely wrong, that Bank of America is wrong, and that this is going to continue pushing higher and that stocks go up. I would love to see your guys' stocks down below. They don't only go up. They tend to pull down and then they go up. But over time and over the years, they do tend to go up if you pick the right stocks that survive. But stocks don't only go up. But if you want to write that down below, that stocks only go up and that this video is completely wrong and that the hedge funds and banks are wrong, I would love to see your thoughts down below. It is something to be aware of. I like to watch things closely. Um, and, it, it, you know, I, I could be completely wrong in this video and it could just continue to run. I mean, the S&P 500 index, like they say, you know, the markets can be more irrational for longer than we can think or even imagine. Right. And that's something that right now it's looking like that. But I'm sure that when tapering starts to happen and, you know, things start to kind of shift and that easy money policy is not out there anymore. You know, the stock market will still have opportunities but it's not going to be moving exactly the same. It's going to be very different. Stay tuned for more videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, let's make some money.